Hi everyone, I hope you're good today on this girl's story time. It is a super exciting day because on my calendar here it says that it is the 1st of December and as I come up to the space today I found this. Wow! And if I open it up it's got lots of different stories in it. Now I'm hoping that you will like to share these stories with me and for every day during December I am going to be reading a story from our advent calendar so that we can all count down to Christmas together. Now if we have a look at the board it says at Miss Bill's story time hashtag story to Christmas day one so we have got a special hashtag for the whole of this month so if you're joining in with an advent story or you have one of these and you want to read along please use the hashtag to let me know hashtag story to christmas now it's time to find out what our first story might be where is number one oh, all the way over here now i'm going to put my advent calendar there and i'm going to make sure that pugsy keeps an eye on it for us so that it's nice and safe and if I open our little book it's called Mickey's Christmas Carol. Now it's very small so you might have to use your imagination. Okay are we ready Miss Phineas? Let's go. It was Christmas Eve and Ebenezer Scrooge was rushing through snowy London. Scrooge didn't like Christmas and he didn't believe in helping the poor. He barged past carolers and wouldn't give a penny to anyone. Even when Scrooge's nephew, Fred, stopped by his office, shouting, Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge! Scrooge kicked him out. A while later, Scrooge's assistant, Bob Cratchit, stepped down from his stool to go home. I suppose you'll be wanting tomorrow off, Scrooge barked, but be here all the earlier the next day. Thank you, Mr Scrooge, cried Bob, and Merry Christmas! he called as he went. Bah! Humbug! muttered Scrooge. Later that night, Scrooge look, locked up his office and went home. As he went to open the front door, Scrooge took a close look at his door knocker. He gasped. On the knocker was the face of his old business partner, partner Jacob Marley. The face began to move, then softly called, Scrooge. Frightened, Scrooge raced inside, but soon enough the ghost of his former partner appeared in front of him, chains circling his body. Tonight you will be visited by three spirits, beamed Marley. Listen to them, do what they say, or your chains will be heavier than mine. Farewell, Ebenezer. Scrooge went to bed, but not long later he was awoken by a little figure in a top hat. I am the ghost of Christmas past, he told Scrooge. You must come with me. But Scrooge laughed. <laughs> Look how small you are. Go away. Silence, ordered the spirit. If men were measured by kindness, you would be smaller than a grain of sand. We are going back to a time when Christmas was not humble. The spirit commanded Scrooge, grabbed his coattails, and remembering Marley's warning, he held on. The window flew open and instantly they were soaring over rooftops and chimneys, the spirit's little umbrella keeping them afloat. So when they landed outside a brightly lit house, joyful Christmas music filled the air. Peering through the window, Scrooge couldn't believe his eyes. Why, it's Isabel, he cried, suddenly remembering the girl that he had once loved. But who's she dancing so merrily with? That man was you, Scrooge, replied the spirit, in the days when you were too kind and wonderful. Then the spirit whisked Scrooge away to another scene. Inside, Scrooge, of many years before, sat behind a desk covered in money. Isabel stood in front of him, tears in her eyes. Why is Isabel crying? asked Scrooge. Then he remembered he had taken Isabella's home from her when she could not pay her bills and refused to marry her. Oh no. 
Suddenly, Scrooge found himself back in bed. He thought it had been a dream, but then his thoughts turned to Isabel and how his chances of happiness with her had been ruined by his love of money. Scrooge put his head down and sobbed into his pillow. As he cried, Scrooge felt a heavy hand on his shoulder. He sat up and beside him was a fierce looking giant feasting. I am the ghost of Christmas past, he boomed. There's no time to lose. And with that, the spirit picked Scrooge up and put him in his pocket. He then pushed open the roof and stepped outside, as though from a doll's house. Scrooge peeked out of the giant's pocket. I wonder where we're going, he said to himself. Pulling Scrooge from his pocket, the spirit tore a lamppost from the ground to use as a lantern as he walked through the streets. Soon they arrived at a tiny run-down house. What a dreadful little house, Scrooge exclaimed. Who could live in such a place? Perhaps a miserable beggar. Look closer, Scrooge, and tell me who you see, said the spirit. Scrooge pressed his face against the glass for a better look. Why, it's Bob Cratchit, my clerk, he said with surprise. Does he live here? The spirit scowled. Look at how he lives, thanks to your generosity. Look at the food his family must eat on Christmas Eve, because it's all that they can afford. The hungry Cratchit family sat at their table, about to carve up the goose the smallest goose Scrooge had ever seen. Scrooge watched a tiny boy named Tiny Tim hobble into the room, leaning on a little crutch. He gave thanks to Scrooge for the meal and Scrooge felt ashamed. Tell me, spirit, what's wrong with that kind lad? asked Scrooge. Much, I'm afraid, the spirit replied. If these shadows remain unchanged, I see an empty chair where Tiny Tim once sat. Suddenly, the scenes went dark and Scrooge was alone, church bells towing in the distance. Just then, swirling smoke engulfed Scrooge, growing thicker and thicker until he could not see anything around him. The smoke blew in his nose and he coughed. As the smoke lifted, Scrooge found himself standing in a graveyard. There were tombstones everywhere covered by snow. Scrooge looked up to find he was no longer alone. A horrible shadow, his face hidden inside a cloak, stood silently before him. Ha, 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 are you the ghost of Christmas future? stammered Scrooge. Tell me what will happen to Tiny Tim. The spirit just looked at Scrooge, then raised his arm and pointed in the distance. Scrooge looked to where the spirit was pointing and saw Bob Cratchit and his family gathered around a tombstone. Bob knelt before a little gravestone, tears rolling down his face, and gently laid Tiny Tim's crutch on top. Oh no, Scrooge cried. Spirit, I didn't want this to happen. Tell me how these events can be changed. Scrooge noticed two grave diggers finishing a fresh grave. I've never seen a funeral like this, one of them said. No mourners, no friends to bid him farewell. Scrooge peered into the grave and asked the spirit who it belongs to. Why, it's yours, Ebenezer, the spirit laughed as his hood fell on his face. No, I'll change, cried Scrooge. The grave burst into flames and the spirit pushed him in. Let me out, screamed Scrooge. Let me Suddenly, a bell tolling, and as Scrooge opened his eyes, he cried with joy. He was back in his bedroom. It's Christmas morning, he exclaimed. He threw on his coat and hat and raced for the door. He ran out onto the street, calling Merry Christmas to everyone he met. He gave two men a bag of coins each, who stood there speechless, wondering what had changed in grumpy old Scrooge. Scrooge even stopped his nephew when he saw him approaching in a wagon. Fred was very surprised by his uncle's cheerfulness that he almost fell out of his carriage. Waving goodbye to his nephew, Scrooge continued on his way to Bob Cratchit's house. Scrooge knocked on his employee's door. Bob opened the door and his face fell when he saw who it was. Why, Mr Scrooge? 
Merry Christmas. Um, won't you come in? He said. Scrooge stomped inside and dropped a heavy sack on the floor. Scrooge then broke into a massive smile and told Bob he was getting a pay rise and he bought food and toys for his family. Bob Cratchit couldn't believe it. Oh, thank you, Mr Scrooge. Merry Christmas, Bob, Scrooge said, as the whole family danced with joy. It was a Christmas miracle. And God bless everyone, said Tiny Tim. The end. What a lovely way to start our countdown to Christmas. So I will be back tomorrow with another story for day two of our hashtag story to Christmas from our Disney advent calendar. I will make sure that Pugsy and Mickey and Minnie look after it and keep it safe for us. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you tomorrow. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe on the YouTube page and please use the hashtag if you are going to be reading this at home along with me. Have a lovely evening guys. Sweet dreams.